this can happen regardless of your child was in early intervention or not, right? So if your child is older than three and it could literally be as soon as like today is their birthday, today is their third birthday or like, you know, they're three, three years and one day old, you can call up your school district, right? So I want you to open up a search bar and type in whatever town you live in, school district, and then put in the word um, child study team. So every district, every school district has something. Down. Yes, yes. Child study team. Child study team. Down. Yes. So every um, district has a CST or a child study team. And the child study team is responsible for evaluating any child who is in the district where parents have concerns about their development, right? So that child does not need to be in school because I know, right, New Jersey has a rolling mandatory preschool program where like it rolled out a year ago or like two years ago and some cities have it some cities don't some cities it's a lottery and some cities you can just pretty much get in but what's great about calling your child studies team is that if your child qualifies for services so what they'll do is they'll do a nice phone intake then they'll ask you to bring your child in and they'll meet them for like 15 minutes right really interact with them kind of get a gauge of what's going on then they'll decide what service what areas of development they want to assess motor skills communication adaptive etc and then over the course of 45 days they will have you bring your child in to get assessed ot et etc etc and they have 90 days from the day that they call the meeting to start assessing to have your child assessed to write up the evaluation reports which can sometimes take a long time based on experience <laughs> and then to come to the table and talk about what services they're recommending for your child. Now, even if your child is literally like, again, like they're just like three years and two months, if they are eligible for, and it depends from state to state, right? Like what the criteria is. Sometimes you have to be eligible in two areas. Sometimes you have to be eligible in one area. If they're found to be eligible for services, period, they can start school right away, right? So I have a little friend who just started school um, and he just turned three like less than a month ago, right? So they were able to assess him pretty quickly and get him started. And so he's in a, um, he's in a general education program, but they pull him out to receive special education throughout the day. So he gets speech therapy in a pullout setting in a separate room and he gets occupational therapy in a special room, right? Um, so again, like, even if your child is like not necessarily in school right now, right? They're between three to five and you're just like, what do I do? I don't have mandatory preschool in my town. Your mm -hmm. town is obligated to assess your child and determine if they need services. And if they need services, have access or like put them in a program where they can receive those services. What's really great about this is even if your child starts, right? If, even if your child has a summer birthday, they can still start, right? And then they can do something called extended school year, which will carry them over to September when school actually starts. And then they're eligible to do this, right? To be in the specialized program or receive specialized services until five or whenever like traditional school starts in your town. Um, so child studies team, if you haven't heard of it, if you look it up, your town has one or your district has one or, you know, if it's like a congregate of three towns, like somewhere will have one and then you can get your child assessed that way. Also, if your child is about to age out of early intervention, right? So if they're about to turn three, which is when children age out of early intervention, three months before they age out of early intervention, you'll get a call from your service coordinator and they'll tell you, you know, Timmy's about to age out of early intervention. Um, do you think that they still need services or they'll kind of call up the providers and say, how do you think he's doing? Do you still think he'll need services? And, you know, everybody will come to the table and say, yeah, I still think he'll need some services. So early intervention will call the CST on your behalf and say, hey, we have this kid in early intervention. Everybody agrees that he still needs some speech therapy. We are going to set up the process for you. And I think that's kind of like the golden way that it can happen is that parents will literally just sit back. And early intervention will do the whole thing for you. They'll schedule your meetings. They'll make sure that all your paperwork is in. They'll send in your notes from early intervention to the CST team. And all you have to do is bring your child in for the assessments. And then more likely than not, they will um, they will qualify for services and then they can get that at school. So three to five, very that's helpful. what I would do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then so if your school district, basically, it's, exactly. it's blanketed. That's very helpful. Yeah. And so... Um, I would say use well, use your yours use your pediatrician mm -hmm. also as your resource for yeah. these sorts of things. There are developmental pediatricians who are specialized in evaluating, and this is like leaving this just the speech space, yeah. but 
they are helpful at evaluating. They're also almost impossible to get appointments with, yeah. but they are specialized in this area and have the ability to give tons of resources. Maybe even their office, if you're calling, just you just need to be pointed in the right direction. Yeah. Um, these are also great places to start, but I love this. Like you're at home, you just have to use your browser to, to look these things up and the power is in your hands. This is what we want to do. Empowerment yeah. to the parents. And you, you mentioned it earlier, like you got to advocate for your kids. This is it's hard and it's stressful yeah. and you would want to imagine we're in a place where like, you know, they fall and like, we'll be caught by bubbles and rainbows. Yeah. Uh, but like, you got to fight for your kids a lot of the time and be their best advocates. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely agree. Um, and I think like parents, I, that's one thing that I tell my parents too, right? If you just have a gut feeling that there is something that you're extra that your child needs. I always want you to follow that gut feeling, right? And if you are not getting the answers that make sense to you right now, if someone is telling you just to wait or they're a boy or, you know, it's because you're speaking multiple languages or something that just doesn't really make sense to you and you know that your child has a need um, to follow your gut feeling because I know that parents are like their child's first teacher and they know their child best, right? You spend the most time with your child. So I want you to feel comfortable saying, something is just not right. Or like, we really just need extra help. Or I just don't feel like we're moving along or making the progress that we should be. So I want parents to feel empowered to be able to, to say that right to the providers until they get the answer that they're looking for. 